Last month, I put together a video that looked at 1080p gaming performance using just AMD graphics cards with the aim to determine which GPU in their current lineup offered the best bang for their buck at the most commonly used resolution. Despite being what I felt was an interesting comparison, in hindsight it was unfortunately poorly timed. Just two weeks after the release of that video, AMD released another new sub $300 graphics card, the R9 380X. And not only that, but a week later, the new AMD Crimson Suite was released, offering a flashy new user interface and even better performance. One would think AMD might have timed the 380X and Crimson driver release to coincide with one another. Not only would this have maximized the impact of the 380X, but it would have also better showcased their new user interface. It seems the more things change at AMD, the more things stay the same, but I digress. So not only has AMD's GPU lineup changed, but so too is the performance, if only slightly. Other changes include more aggressive pricing from both AMD and Nvidia for the holiday spending season, while we have a new range of games to test with. As was the case with the previous 1080p gaming video, we'll be focusing heavily on price versus performance. Prices will be based on what we can find at major US retailers such as Newegg.com and therefore all prices will be based on the US currency. Ideally, we'll be looking for an average of 60 FPS, though we understand that some gamers will want upwards of 120 FPS for their 120 Hz and 144 Hz gaming monitors. For testing, we've selected 9 games and almost all of them are very new. The list includes oh, the not so new Battlefield 4, along with Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, Just Cause 3, Star Wars Battlefront, Fallout 4, Mad Max, Batman Arkham Knight, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, and Game of the Year, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. For almost all of the games, Fraps was used to measure frame rate performance and we recorded 90 seconds of gameplay in each game. The only game where we didn't use Fraps was Rainbow Six Siege as the built-in benchmark works nicely. Finally, all graphics cards used were clocked according to the default AMD specifications and overclocking performance won't be taken into account here. Testing takes place exclusively at 1080p using a Core i5-6600K processor with the latest graphics card and system drivers under Windows 10. First up we have Battlefield 4 which is the only game we've tested that wasn't released within the last 9 months. Still, despite being two years old now, Battlefield 4 is still extremely popular and visually stunning, making it very demanding on the GPU. Bang for your buck, the R9 2GB model looks like the best deal here, with an average of 58 FPS and a minimum of 48 FPS. The same performance was also delivered by the 4GB model. The 380X was disappointing here as it delivered just 5 FPS more on average. The 390 proved to be a huge step forward with 87 FPS and a minimum of just 72 FPS. Crazy to see the 390 minimum frame rate sitting above the 380X's average frame rate. In the section of Batman Arkham Knight that we test, the 2GB 380 is a good option for an average of 60 FPS, though it does dip as low as 39 FPS at times, while the 4GB model is really no faster. The 380X again only offers a few extra frames per second, while the R7 370 is only just playable with an average of 44 FPS. The 390 is incredibly fast at 1080p with an average of 96 frames per second, making it just 4 FPS slower than the 390X. The Fury was a lot faster again, hitting 122 FPS, while the Fury X was just 6 FPS faster, averaging 128 FPS. The 382GB is considerably slower in Call of Duty Black Ops 3, dropping down to 47fps average with a 40fps minimum. This time the 4GB model is able to offer a little extra performance as the average frame rate increased to 52fps, though the minimum was only slightly higher at 42fps. Again, the 380X offers a disappointing gain over the 380, particularly when looking at the 4GB model. The 390 was again much faster as the 69 FPS minimum frame rate was much higher than the 380X's average frame rate. The 380 was able to deliver very playable performance in Fallout 4, with an average of 60 FPS and a minimum of 50 FPS. The 380X was on average 9 frames per second faster, while the 390 was 27 frames per second faster, and yet again we see that the 390 minimum frame rate, which was 70 FPS this time, was slightly higher than the 380X's average. Just Cause 3 is an awesome open world game that plays surprisingly well on mid-range hardware, and the 2GB 380 is a perfect example of this, with 50 FPS, and the 4GB model wasn't able to improve upon this frame rate. 
The R7 370 struggled with 34 FPS and did dip down to 27 FPS, though for what you pay this isn't bad performance in one of the latest computer games with the quality settings maxed out at 1080p. Moving past the 380, we find the 380X delivering 5 FPS more on average at 55 FPS, while the 390 brings us up to 66 FPS. Beyond that, the gains are pretty small given how much more the 390X, Fury and Fury X cost. Mad Max is probably the least demanding game that we test with and using the highest possible in-game quality settings is still playable on the Radiant R7 370, which is impressive given the game looks quite good. The 380 provided excellent performance with a minimum of 62 FPS and an average of 75 FPS, and again the 2GB and 4GB models delivered the same performance. Rainbow Six Siege is the only game we didn't use fraps to record a section of gameplay and instead relied on the in-game benchmark which seems to represent demanding gameplay very well. The R7 370 performed surprisingly well and the minimum frame rate never dipped below 30 FPS, while an average of 46 FPS allowed for relatively smooth and playable gaming performance. Something else we found interesting was the fact that the 4GB 380 was considerably faster than the 2GB model, delivering almost 13% more performance. This meant that the 380X was just 6 FPS faster than the 4GB 380, but 13 frames per second faster than the 2GB 380. Star Wars Battlefront is another new game that despite looking amazing, isn't overly demanding, especially at 1080p. Here the R7 370 averaged 44 FPS, while the 380 2GB and 4GB models were much faster with 60 FPS. The 380X was only able to average 66 FPS, making it much slower than the 390 which rendered 87 FPS on average. The R7 370 fails to provide playable performance in The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt with the visual settings maxed out, and this isn't entirely surprising as we're using rendering technology such as Hairworks. Even the 380 struggled with an average of just 35 FPS for the 2GB model, while both the 2GB and 4GB models dipped down to the same 23 FPS minimum. Ideally, gamers will want at least a 390 for this game as this graphics card ensured that the frame rate never dipped below 30. Looking at the power consumption in Fallout 4, we see that the 380 2GB and 4GB models are reasonably efficient, particularly when compared to the 380X which consume almost the same amount of power as the 390. The Fury and Fury X are also reasonably fuel efficient given the performance they deliver while the 390X is a bit of a power pig as the entire system consumption reached 351 watts in this title. The Star Wars Battlefront consumption figures are interesting and don't really make that much sense. These are the kind of figures I would expect to find from a game such as The Witcher 3, where the Fury and Fury X weren't a great deal faster than the 390 for example. The reason being that the Fury graphics cards are seen to consume less power than the 380X, 390 and 390X. The margins aren't drastic but it is unexpected that a Fury graphics card would consume less power than say the 380X in any game. Again, the 380s consume considerably less power than the 380X, 390 and Fury graphics cards and as expected the R7 370 consumes the least amount of power. Initially, I hadn't planned to redo this video with the 380X as it was already quite clear the 380 and 390 were the best options for 1080p, depending on how much you want to spend. Again, we found on average the 380X was just 10% faster than the vanilla 380 and given it costs almost 30% more than the 2GB 380, it just doesn't make sense. That said, the 380X isn't bad value or a bad graphics card, the 380 is just an incredibly good buy and the 380X failed to change that. The plan initially was to move on and create another 1080p gaming performance video using the Nvidia GeForce 900 series. In the end, it made sense to start over using the latest games and drivers, and well, now that we have achieved that, you can expect the Nvidia version next week. Pricing is another reason to update this video before the holiday season, as there's been quite a few changes to the AMD lineup since the 380X's arrival. The 370, 380 and 390X are now all $20 cheaper, though the 390 doesn't appear to have moved in price, and this is probably due to the fact that it was already much better value than the 390X. The biggest price cuts have been made to the Fury and Fury X, both are $50 cheaper than they were a month previously. Before we look at the cost per dollar numbers, let's just summarise the performance seen in the 9 games tested. On average, the Radiant R7 370 was good for 41 FPS, which isn't bad considering every game was tested using the maximum quality settings. 
Still, for smooth lag-free gaming, you'll want the 380, which averaged a healthier 56 FPS. Of the nine games tested, the 4GB 380 was noticeably faster than the 2GB model in just two of them, which included Call of Duty Black Ops 3 and most notably Rainbow Six Siege. Given the 4GB model cost us $20 more, it's probably worth getting over the 2GB model, though be aware for the most part there's little to be gained at 1080p, but of course this could change in the future. The 380X offers only a very minor performance bump over the 380, while the 390 is worlds faster and we found more often than not, the minimum frame rate was higher than the 380X's average. So, with all the new pricing data taken into account, which graphics cards represent the best value at 1080p? As you can see, despite being slow, the 370 actually represents the best price per frame ratio. So for those on a tight budget, this is your best option. Just be prepared to scale down a few quality settings. The 2GB 380 also represents excellent value, as we'd found previously, and with an average of almost 60 FPS, it comes in at a cost of $3.21 per frame, while the 4GB model costs $3.50 per frame. Here we see that despite being $70 cheaper, the 380X actually costs slightly more than the 390 per frame thanks to the 390's superior performance. As we found last time, the 390X, Fury and Fury X all come at a serious price premium and aren't really worth it for 1080p gaming, unless you're chasing big frame rates for monitors with extreme refresh rates. This again leaves us with the 380 and 390 as the best value options in AMD's product stack and both work very well with all the latest AAA titles released over the past few months. The revised Crimson drivers not only look great but seem to be working very well, delivering small performance boosts across the board. Finally, for those of you who want to study the graphs in a more practical format, we've uploaded them in our forum at hardwareunbox.com, so be sure to check that out. I'll provide a direct link in the video description. Thanks for watching another Hardware Unbox comparison. I'm your host Matt and I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments. Don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.